Hey YouTube, Jim here. Welcome to Top 10 Archive. Time and time again, the internet tries to trip us up with its seemingly endless supply of mind benders and brain teasers. Then we compile our favorites and dump them on you to figure out. Since we've found success in stumping some of our archivists previously, we thought we'd give it another go with these 10 riddles that many people can't seem to solve. And before we get started, help us out by hitting that like button and be sure to leave us a comment because we're always looking to engage in interesting conversations with you. Also, don't forget to click the bell so you get notified every time we put out a new video. Number 10. Let's start off this on the simpler side with a basic word riddle. I have keys that have no matching locks. I have space, but no room. You can enter, but you can't go outside. Hmm, what could possibly have keys with no matching locks, plenty of space but room for nothing, and offer you the ability to enter but not leave? Well, it doesn't sound like a home, considering one would have everything this riddle says it doesn't. Think outside the box, give us a pause, and see if you can figure it out. Need a hint? Well, without it, there'd be no YouTube comments. If you guessed a keyboard, you figured it out. Keys, a space bar, an enter key. All elements of the riddle are right in front of you. You may have noticed the first part of the riddle was changed, having originally read, I have keys but no locks, but one can make an argument for the caps lock key. Number nine, there was a man who was born before his father, killed his mother, and married his sister, yet all was normal. How is this possible? Sounds like some forgotten Greek mythological tale, but this riddle is far less scandalous than that. The answer is all in how you interpret the wording. Can a man really be born before his father is? Or could the riddle mean before, as in, in front of? Why not give us a pause, take that hint, and see if it helps you to a resolution. By now you may have realized that hint was really part of the solution. The man cannot have been born prior to his father, so his father was present at his birth, during which his mother died. As for marrying his sister, Apparently, his path in life brought him to officiate weddings, and his sister simply asked him to wed her and her beau. Number eight, murder or suicide. This popular riddle is going to require you to put on your deer stalker and pull out your pipe. It's time for some sleuthing. Many have taken a stab at it, so we figured, why not us? It's a grim scenario. A young lass seems to have taken her life, and at first glance, it seems to obviously be a suicide. But then the little details stick out. Can you pinpoint some telling clues? How would the blood splatter wind up on what would have been her right side when the gun is in her right hand? Maybe she wasn't facing the window, that's a possibility, but what of the cigarette? The fact that she's still holding the gun, the unplugged lamp on what looks to be a dark night, the ominous lone sandal. Seems like something fishy's going on here. Putting all the smaller clues together, it's safe to say that this is a murder scene. Number seven, how many triangles do you see? We tried to stump you with squares in a past archive, but that didn't quite work for some of you. Maybe changing shapes will do the trick. So, looking at this image, how many do you see? Go ahead, pause the video and give a count. We'll wait. What'd you wind up with? Somewhere in the 40s, right? 44 seems to be a popular answer, but is the popular answer always correct? No, in fact, it's quite a ways off to the final answer of 104. There's a mess of hidden triangles, large ones, small ones, mid-sized ones, all crammed into this star. Number six, a bat and a ball cost $1.10. The bat cost $1 more than the ball. How much does the ball cost? Who doesn't love a little math riddle? Well, probably a lot of you, especially math riddles that tend to have obvious answers that, well, aren't correct. We've found that a lot of people that assume that if the bat is $1 more, then the ball must be 10 cents. And while it may look right, it's sloppy math. If the ball is 10 cents and the bat is $1 more, then the bat would really cost $1.10 and the total would be $1.20. To get to $1.10, we can't ignore that however much the ball is, the bat will be that plus a dollar. Let's say the ball cost 5 cents, the bat would then be $1.05. Add the two together and you have your magic number, $1.10. Number five, find the series. Ah, the first dreaded number riddle. Let's just dive right into it. So what's the pattern and correlation from one line to the next? One, 11, 21, 1211? Or maybe that's not how these numbers are meant to be read. Is each number an individual, not a part of a whole? 
Let's see if you can figure it out without any further hints. Pause and come back when you've got it. Did you get 13112221? You see, each subsequent line describes the line before it. The 11 line is really saying 1 number 1. The next line is saying 2 number 1s. And the fourth line is stating 1 number 2 and 1 number 1. So, the solution string is saying 1 number 3, 1 number 1, 2 number 2s, and 2 number 1s. Number 4. Which tank will fill first? Here we have four empty tanks with equal air pressure and a tap that will pour water at a steady rate into the top tank. Assuming all variables remain the same, which of the tanks will fill up first? Since tanks 1 and 2 have level openings at the bottom of the tank, the water won't have the chance to fill until the adjacent tank is full. That leaves 3 and 4. Seeing as how 3 also has an opening at the bottom, one may assume the same rule applies. Well, does it? Not at all. Because the water has to move up from tank 3 to 4, tank 3 will be able to fill while 4 does. In fact, the two tanks will wind up filling at the same time, giving you your answer. Number 3. More maths. 1 plus 4 equals 5. 2 plus 5 equals 12. 3 plus 6 equals 21. 8 plus 11 equals what? This looks like a pretty straightforward mathematical equation, right? Well, if that were the case, it would be on a list filled with complex riddles. As with most number riddles, it's all about finding a pattern. We know that 1 plus 4 does equal 5, but 2 plus 5 falls short of 12 by, well, it would appear to be 5, wouldn't it? And what about 3 plus 6? How far from 21 is that answer? It appears we figured out that we're to take the prior answer and add it to the following equation, so that the last equation should read 8 plus 11 plus 21 gives us an answer of 40. But that's not the only answer. Others have figured out if you change the original equations to multiplication, then duplicate and add the first number of the equation, you can still work it through to get a final answer of 96. Number 2. A woman steals $100. Imagine running your own grocery and one day a customer walks in, unknowingly steals $100 from your register, then buys $70 worth of groceries from you. They give you the $100, you give them $30 in change, and they leave. At the close of the transaction, how much money did you lose? Don't forget to consider all aspects. Pause the vid if you need to. Well, did you get $70? $30? Maybe $130? All of these answers have been posed, but the math lands on $100. That is, however, only if we ignore the actual cost of goods that were purchased with the stolen money. This mathematical riddle happens to be one that's been dividing the internet, though the difficulty of it believed to be a matter of overcomplicating an otherwise easy equation. Number 1. Burgers and Fries Take a very close look at this image. Make note that each of the represented images is associated with a number. Well, we don't have to walk you through the easy stuff. By now, you've probably figured out that a soda is worth 10, a burger 5, and two sets of fries represents 2. With that in mind, the last part of the equation should work out to read 5 plus 1 times 10 equals 15, right? Maybe not. And this is another riddle that's been pitting people of the internet against one another. We know that two fries equal two, but can we just assume that one fry equals one and isn't its own unrelated variable? When speaking algebra, we can't just assign a variable if it isn't given to you, which is why few have considered this problem unsolvable. Though if you just play along and bust out that order of operations method you thought you'd never use again and your mundane sixth grade math teacher was so adamant that you learn, you'd come up with an answer of 15. So that begs the question, which side of the argument are you on?